Are you constantly teaching and reteaching the same thing over and over again? Do you wish there were multiple versions of you to help your students? Well, there can be. You need to incorporate more instructional video into your classroom. It's not as hard as it sounds. Let me help you get started. Great. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. Creating instructional videos is surprisingly easy today. There are three main video genres that you might consider. First is a very simple, just webcam video. Basically what we're doing right here is you talking into a camera, explaining a concept to your students. Option two is what I used to do a lot of as a biology teacher, and that is recording a presentation, PowerPoint or Google slide. You can see that on the screen and then I'll narrate and mark up different things as we go through the presentation. That's good for a lot of technical things, English, language arts, history, and certainly the sciences uh, like what I did. The third option is to record yourself either at the whiteboard or using a document camera, writing and drawing on a piece of paper. This is an ideal instructional strategy if you're teaching math or if you're teaching younger students and you need to actually do handwritten work uh, for your students to see. All three of these ideas are easy to do. I want to show you some tips, some tools, and some strategies to help you create an awesome video for your classroom. I want to thank Logitech for sponsoring this video. Logitech has been making high quality audio and video equipment for schools for decades. I'll be featuring some great Logitech products in this video. One of my favorite ways to use video is for sub plans. Rather than typing out detailed instruction, I'll simply open the camera app on my Chromebook and press record. I talk right into the camera, explaining to my students what I expect for that day and what the lesson is going to be about. I'm recording this on the Logitech C920E webcam. It's a great high resolution webcam with a built-in microphone. I do minimal editing for these videos. They're super short, usually less than five minutes. If I mess up, I just re-record it. I just don't have the time or the energy to do a lot of detailed recording. If you want to do a little bit of editing, I typically use Canva. We video is another good option, but keep it to a minimum. These videos are meant to be short to the point just for your students. Now, the second option for recording video is to record yourself going through a presentation. That can be Google Slides or PowerPoint, whatever you've got. This is a great way to give students with detailed information about a new topic. I did this a lot as a biology teacher. Now, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the Chromebook. Chromebooks have a built-in screen recorder, so you don't have to install anything. You can also use a digital pen if you've got a touchscreen Chromebook to use the laser pointer and annotate right on the screen. Now, depending on what you're using, you can utilize your favorite screencasting tool, whether that's Screencastify or Loom or um, the built-in screen recorder on Chromebooks that I just mentioned. You definitely do want a good microphone to make sure the audio is coming through correctly. I'm using the blue Snowball mic from Logitech, which is a great option to consider. These videos, again, require minimal editing. The visuals are all built into the slide deck. I really don't do a lot of post-editing for these presentations. I try to keep them as short as possible. Usually less than 10 minutes is ideal. I want to give a special mention to an incredible piece of software that's only available for Chromebooks. It's called Screencast, and it is specifically designed for capturing instructional content. Now, what is unique about Screencast is that not only does it record your screen, like we just talked about, but it also creates an interactive transcript of everything that you say. Students will be able to hear and read what you're saying on the screen, which is great for accessibility. But even better, you can actually skim through the transcript and click on a particular section, word, or paragraph to fast forward the video to that precise point. This is a wonderful tool for math or more technical concepts where students may want to review a particular problem or illustration multiple times. I've got an entirely separate video that does a detailed uh, walkthrough of screencasts. It's free, it's built into every Chromebook, and it's pretty cool. You should definitely check it out. The third type of video that I want to discuss is the video that will allow you to interact with a physical thing, whether that's hand drawing a problem on a sheet of paper, showing something physical like a science experiment, or reading a book. To do this, you're going to need a document camera or some kind of a camera that can point down or at a whiteboard. Now, Logitech has some great tools for this. I'm showing you the Logitech Reach webcam, which is incredible. It's very easy to manipulate up 
up and down and focus on any physical thing on your desk, um, I would highly recommend it. They also have a really slick tool called Logitech Scribe, which is specifically designed for whiteboards where you can record what you're doing um, up on the screen. Get a good document camera that can show what you're doing on your desk and you've got a great piece of equipment to help you create these videos. Once you have your video, you need to consider where you're going to save that video content to use and reuse over and over again. Now, in a lot of cases, you can just stick that video into Google Drive. You've got tons of storage. It works great. It's easy. No problem at all. For most of the videos that are unique to my classroom, I'm going to stick them in Google Drive. If you are considering widening your audience, you can also consider posting them on YouTube. That will allow you to either save them privately and giving the link to your students, or you can make them available to the general public as well, similar to Khan Academy. Your choice, it really doesn't matter. Ultimately, those videos are going to go into your learning management system, whether it's Google Classroom or Canvas uh, or whatever you happen to use. But put them in Drive or YouTube for easy access. Recording instructional videos is a skill that you need to develop. It's not going to be comfortable when you first get started. The interesting thing is nobody sees your mistakes. Like you're watching this video, I'm going to remind you, you don't see the hundreds of times that I press the record button and messed up. Those got deleted. I'm only sharing the finished version, the good version with you. Be patient with yourself. You're going to have to record it a few times. No one's going to love their video, but your students are going to love seeing you as their teacher, helping them with these concepts much better than some random video that you pulled off YouTube. I want to provide some additional resources for you to check out. If you're interested in learning more about editing video, I'm going to post some resources for that. I also encourage you to check out the video on screencast that I mentioned earlier. And of course, if you're looking for some high quality audio, video equipment, the document camera, make sure you check out the awesome catalog from Logitech.